For decades, the skies pretty much belonged to one country. The American F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II were the undisputed kings of air power, symbols of an invisible advantage. They were aircraft that could slice through the most heavily defended airspace on the planet, totally unseen and unchallenged. But what if that whole era is coming to an end? What if the very technology that gave the West its air dominance is about to be completely appended? There are whispers from the intelligence community that China has pulled off something that was once thought to be impossible, a revolutionary new stealth material. This isn't just a slightly better paint job, it's a potential game-changer that could rewrite the entire rulebook of air combat. The scary part is that China's growing fleet of stealth fighters, like the J-20 Mighty Dragon and the newer J-35, could suddenly become ghosts to even our best radar systems. But is this new tech the real deal? Or is it all just hype? We're going to separate the facts from the fiction to figure out if China's stealth technology can really outsmart modern radar. So, what's at the heart of this new threat? It's a field of physics that sounds like it was pulled straight from science fiction. Metamaterials. You don't dig these out of the ground. They are artificially engineered structures, built with properties that you just don't find in nature. Think of them like a microscopic maze, specifically designed to trap and kill certain types of energy. For years, the big problem for stealth aircraft was the trade-off between its shape and its materials. The shape, all those sharp angles and smooth surfaces, is the first defense, designed to bounce high-frequency radar waves away from the dish. But making a plane that shape can mess with how it flies. The second defense is a special coating called radar absorbent material, or RAM, which is supposed to soak up radar energy like a sponge. The problem is, traditional RAM has an Achilles heel, low-frequency radar. Radars that use longer wavelengths, like those in the VHF and UHF bands, aren't as fooled by the plane's shape and can often get a faint return signal from a stealth fighter when other radars see nothing. This is the exact vulnerability that a lot of anti-stealth systems are designed to hunt for. This is where China's big claim comes in. Scientists there have reportedly created an ultra-thin metamaterial that specifically goes after these low-frequency radars. According to their published papers, the material uses a special structure that can convert incoming radar waves directly into heat, which then just bleeds off harmlessly into the air. This directly counters the main tool used by anti-stealth systems. They also claim the material is light, flexible, and ready for mass production, solving a lot of the headaches that came with older stealth coatings. It is a clear attempt to plug the biggest known gap in stealth technology today. To really get why this is such a big deal, we have to talk about how radar actually works. Imagine you're throwing a tennis ball against a wall. That's like a high-frequency radar. The short wavelength gives you a clean, crisp bounce back, telling you exactly where the wall is. Now, imagine throwing a giant beach ball at that same wall. That's low-frequency radar. The long wavelength tends to sort of wrap around smaller details, and it can be thrown off by the object itself resonating. Stealth fighters like the F-22 and F-35 are masterpieces, designed to beat the high-frequency fire control radars, the kind that guides a missile to its target. Their shape scatters those short waves everywhere except back to the radar dish. Their coatings are tuned to absorb that energy. That's what makes them so hard to lock on to. But the long wavelength, early warning radars are a different animal. Their long waves interact with the entire aircraft, and certain parts of the plane, like the tail fins or the wings, can start to resonate and send back a detectable signal. This is how you can have a fighter that's a ghost to a targeting radar but still shows up as a tiny blip on a long-range surveillance radar. It might not be a clean enough signal to fire a missile, but it tells you something is out there. And in a fight, just knowing that is half the battle. China's new metamaterial is designed to stop this resonance effect in its tracks. By absorbing that low-frequency energy and turning it into heat, it tries to prevent the plane's structure from ringing like a bell in the first place. If this works as advertised in the real world, it wouldn't just make a fighter jet harder to target, it could make it incredibly difficult to even detect from far away, robbing an enemy of that critical early warning. But here's the thing. You can't just slap a new material on a jet and call it invisible. China's strategy is way more holistic, 
combining this new material with huge leaps in aircraft design and electronic warfare. This isn't about one magic cloak, it's about building layers of deception. First, you have the airframes themselves. China's fifth-generation fighters, the J-20 Mighty Dragon and the newer, carrier-based J-35, are clearly built with stealth shaping as a top priority. They have all the hallmarks of a modern stealth jet, blended wings, internal weapons bays, shielded engines, all to shrink their radar signature. This new material complements that design, it doesn't replace it. Think of the shape as a shield that deflects most of the arrows, and the new material as armor that stops the few that get through. Second, the fight for invisibility goes beyond just radar. Modern detection uses a whole spectrum of sensors, including infrared systems that look for the heat from an engine or the friction on the aircraft's skin. Chinese research has been pushing hard into what's called multi-spectral stealth, developing materials and tech that can hide a jet from radar, infrared, and microwave detection all at once. Reports also suggest that breakthroughs in domestic semiconductor technology, like new silicon carbide chips, have dramatically boosted the power of the J-20's own radar, potentially allowing it to spot enemies from much farther away while managing its own electronic signature. Finally, there's the invisible battle of electronic warfare. Chinese stealth jets are definitely packed with advanced jammers and spoofers. These systems can actively blast out electronic noise to blind enemy radar or passively create false targets to confuse an entire air defense network. When you combine that with flying dark, keeping your own radar and comms off to avoid giving away your position, it becomes an absolute nightmare for anyone trying to find you. It's a combination of smart materials, slick design, and electronic wizardry that shows China isn't just trying to build a single stealth fighter, they're trying to build an entire system of evasion. So if China is getting this good at perfecting stealth, why are they also pouring money into technology designed to defeat it? This is the great paradox of the modern arms race. Even while China is refining its J-20 and J-35 fighters, it's also rolling out some of the most advanced anti-stealth radar systems on the planet. At recent defense shows, China has put systems like the JY-27V and the YLCAD on full display. These are mobile, truck-mounted, low-frequency radars designed to do exactly what we talked about earlier, hunt for the faint electronic ghosts of stealth aircraft. Its developers even call the JY-27V a master artist at finding stealth targets. China has already started deploying these radars all along its coastline and on its warships. This isn't a contradiction, it's a brutally smart strategy. First, it admits a simple truth, no stealth is perfect. It's all a game of cat and mouse, of shrinking the detection bubble and buying yourself a few more precious seconds. By building both the lock and the key, China gets an incredibly deep understanding of the technology's real-world limits. They learn how to spot weaknesses in their own stealth designs by building the very things that would exploit them. Second. It's a powerful tool for both defense and offense. Defensively, it creates a massive keep-out zone, making it incredibly dangerous for American or allied stealth jets to fly anywhere near Chinese territory. Offensively, it gets them ready for a future where their own stealth advantage might be copied by other countries. They aren't just sharpening the sword, they're perfecting the shield, making sure that no matter which way the technology tilts, they have an answer. This game, where one country pioneers both the invisible plane and the all-seeing eye, is the new reality of military competition. So, can China's stealth tech outsmart modern radar? The answer isn't a simple yes or no. The development of new metamaterials that can absorb low-frequency radar is a huge deal. If these materials are successfully integrated onto jets like the J-20 and J-35, it would seriously threaten the early warning radar systems that are the backbone of today's air defenses. It could shrink detection ranges and shorten decision times to a terrifying degree. But stealth is not an invisibility cloak. It's a constant, back-and-forth struggle between hiding and finding. The fact that China itself is building powerful anti-stealth radars proves this point. Detection is now a network game, fusing data from low-frequency radars, high-frequency systems, passive heat sensors, and satellites to paint a complete picture of the sky. China's breakthrough doesn't mean American radar is useless, but it absolutely means the unchallenged advantage the US has held for decades is facing its biggest test yet. 
The tech gap is closing, and the race is speeding up. The question is no longer if a competitor can match American stealth, but what happens now that they are on the verge of doing it, and in some areas, maybe even pushing ahead. The silent war for the skies has just entered a brand new and much more dangerous chapter. What are your thoughts? Is this new material the game changer it's being sold as, or will detection tech always find a way to adapt? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you found this breakdown useful, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more deep dives into the tech that will shape our future.